A couple of years ago I tried to fix an Xbox 360. The video got quite a lot of feedback and for my channel was moderately successful. So I decided that I'd try to fix another one. So on today's Retro Tech Repair, we're going to be trying to fix a second Xbox 360 that I bought spares or repair on eBay. Hello and welcome to Retro Tech Repair and this the second of my Xbox 360 try to fix videos. It's been a while since the first one and like the first one this is most definitely not a how-to video. This is just me going about my thing trying to figure out what to do with this particular Xbox 360. Our console, as you can see, has problems reading discs. It either just sits there and doesn't recognise them at all, or it flags an unrecognised disc error. So the first challenge is trying to get into the Xbox 360. I'd taken the disc drive off before, as you probably noticed, and the front came off with a fairly firm tug. To remove the plastic pieces from the end of the console, I ended up pushing a small screwdriver through select holes on the top and the bottom until I located what a plastic clips kind of holding those end pieces on and once I'd managed to push those three clips down along each side I was able to remove the end piece. Inside the enclosure was extremely dusty and I brushed a lot of that away with a paintbrush. Perhaps even more worrying was the dust had a very strong smell of kind of cologne or maybe Lynx, reminding me that these are probably dead skin cells from a teenager. Not a terribly pleasant thought. The other end piece where the disk drive had previously been situated was removed in a very similar way to the first. The paintbrush was again deployed to remove the remnants of cologne-soaked youth, providing a terrifying insight of what was to come. Next, then, I need to remove the remainders of the plastic enclosure, and I'm really struggling with this. I'd watched numerous YouTube videos on how to do it, and Googled and read, and thought I understood, but no amount of prying or inserting screwdrivers in strategic points was going to remove all of the clips that I needed to gain access. A few minutes on Amazon, and a day later, and I'm now the proud owner of a new brown mat. I'd actually forgotten how good the green looked on the camera and I'll probably go back to the green at some point in the future. But in the same package as this faux brown leatherette loveliness came this, an Xbox 360 opening tool. Although I'm sure it's theoretically possible to open the enclosure using a screwdriver alone, this really simplified the process and I think it's certainly worth having in your toolbox if you're ever going to repair an Xbox 360. With most of the enclosure removed, the initial impression is quite good. And there's no sign of the horrendous modification of removing the X-clamps and replacing them with washers and screws that had been the case with the previous console that I tried to repair. And so the next step then is to remove the screws that are holding the top enclosure and the RF shield in place, and then we can take a look at the insides of the console. Unsurprisingly, the interior and the heat sinks are covered in the same old spice dust that had caked the exterior. But at least the optical drive, which I think is the cause of the problem here, can be just lifted away with no further screws and removed just by undoing the connector on the back of it. So more dust busting is in order and it occurred to me as I was editing this video that I should probably have got out my portable vacuum cleaner instead of trying to remove everything with the brush. However, I didn't and so I attempted to remove everything with the brush, including all of the stuff that had caked onto the fan and that that had wedged itself between the metal enclosure and the outer plastic enclosure that I had to cut away using snips to access. So now finally to the optical drive and I remove the eject button before winding out the tray and then removing the screws holding the outer enclosure of the drive in place. 
I noticed that the warranty seal on the drive is already broken, so I wasn't the first person in here. Seems, however, that whoever was in here didn't clean it. And I must admit, it didn't come as a massive shock to me to learn that the inside of the drive was filthy. So I removed a lot of the dust again with the paintbrush, and then with a Q-tip or cotton bud, where the dirt had adhered itself to the drive mechanism. When I first tested the console, the disc tray was a little bit reluctant to open and close. I didn't have a spare belt suitable to replace the one that drives the disc tray, so instead I decided to remove it, clean it with a little window cleaner, clean the drive pulleys, and then reinstall it back in the drive. Next I re-greased the sliders in the drive using a plastic safe grease. And it has to be said, against my better judgement, used a little IPA to clean off the laser lens itself. Considering how dirty everything had been, I decided it was probably worthwhile now to connect everything back up and try it again to see if it now worked. And hurrah! The first game took a little longer to boot than I anticipated, but after that it seems to work just fine. You can guess what's coming though, I'm sure. The second game didn't work at all, it just kept telling me to open the tray, it spun the disc a bit I think, and then it told me to open the tray again. So I remove the disc drive again, and open it up to see if there's anything else that I can do. So I haven't had a lot of success with the laser pot tweak hacks that I've seen on YouTube on various optical disk drives. In fact, I have some reservations as to whether they make any difference at all. But, well, I've nothing else to lose, so I may as well give it a go. And the first thing that I'm going to do is take some resistance measurements from the potentiometer as it's set at the moment. That way I can return it to its original values, or what I think are its original values, if I decide to go a different route. I'm not quite sure what I'd gain from that since it doesn't work anyway, but, well, you know, it seemed to be a sensible thing to do. So looking now from the back of the drive, you can see two potentiometers, and looking from the back, I'm concentrating my attention on the left-hand one, not because I have any great knowledge, but because that's what the other people on YouTube seem to do. On my console, I get a measurement of 5.6k ohms prior to twiddling, so I make a careful note of that. So now it's pot twiddling time, and I'm aiming to get about 4.5k. Don't ask me why, I think that's what I saw elsewhere on YouTube, so I'm going to give it a go. The theory here being, of course, that by reducing the resistance, you drive the laser diode a little harder, and then magically it works. Of course, I didn't get it right first time, and a bit of twiddling and then measuring, and then twiddling and then measuring was needed until I got the right resistance, but eventually I got to more or less where I wanted. So as I assemble the console before giving it another try, I just wanted to give a shout out to all my loyal subscribers and viewers. I really do appreciate you taking the time to leave feedback and leave comments. It really helps me improve the quality of my videos. I also wanted to say sorry that my videos don't come out as often as I would like, and I don't get the opportunity to post as regularly as I would want to. I have been extremely busy with work and it takes me a while to put these videos together, so I really appreciate your patience. Hopefully over time that situation will improve and I'll be able to get stuff out a little bit more quickly.
and it looks like we've had some success. The games that wouldn't load previously now load up just fine. The games also seem to load more quickly, like the drive isn't struggling so much to read the disc. I can't really show that on the video without even more long pauses than those that you've suffered already, so you'll just have to take my word for it. Post 50 clicks from Visigrad. We're going to introduce ourselves to whoever took it out. So let's get everything assembled before we take one last look at the console. Now I appreciate that today's repair might not last forever, and this is probably just a quick fix. You may get into a lot of trouble for doing this. But the Xbox 360 is one of my favourite consoles, and I am really looking forward to playing some of the games on it for however long it lasts. But for now it seems okay, and the console runs quite nicely without the overwhelming aroma of brute mixed with the occasional Christmas bottle of Davidoff cool water. And that really does wrap it up for our Xbox 360 for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video and that if you have, you'll consider hitting subscribe. And until next time, I'd just like to thank you so much for watching Retro Tech Repair. Let's take the guard's quarters. I gotta work out the kinks. And off we come with the lid.